Hi, I'm Jon Wachtan, technical artist at KG Interactive. And in this second part of the introduction to Unity Shader Graph, we will be creating our first and arguably the most useful shader you might ever create. It's a standard Unity shader, but it utilizes channel packing, which means that we have ambient occlusion in our red channel, roughness in our green channel, and metalness in our blue channel. This way, we save ourselves two entire textures. So to start with, let's just see if we can get some color on this guy. We'll add some color, but sadly you can't yet drag and drop your textures. So what we'll do is we'll create a node. And now we could either go to input, texture, and a texture 2D asset and a sample texture 2D asset, or we could just write texture up here and we're going to find them immediately without having to go into that annoying submenu. So let's start with a texture asset and we're going to go for the budget skin color to start out with. And this one we're going to like in most things inside of Unity and Unreal, etc. You hold down the middle mouse button to move around. You can scroll with the scroll wheel. You right click to do this and you left click and drag to move things. All right, let's go again to texture and put down a sample texture node. And let's drag and drop this here. All right. Now we just pull this to the albedo. And nice, we have our first PBR base. Let's make this small again. Go to our budget skin. We'll just go here under graphs and add the PBR base. All right. And as we can see, nothing's actually happening. And why is that? Well, we haven't saved the asset yet. So we have to make sure to do that. And now, wow, isn't that just beautiful? Kind of pointless though, as if we go to gear and select our PBR base, it's just the same texture there as well. What we can do then is we can right click our texture to the asset and convert it to a property. And here we have the property. It's been renamed. You can double click to change its name. So I'm going to call this the albedo. There we go. And let's save the asset. Sadly, it doesn't retain like a base texture for this. The default doesn't seem to be working as of now. So let's just drag the gear on here and on the skin right here. Awesome. Now, next up, we can also add a texture or actually a property right here. So let's add another texture and we're going to call this the normal. Cool. It's base. Call it budget normal again. And uh, here I'd completely forgotten again to set the texture type to normal map. That's what happens when you're away at Unreal for a bit, I guess. Now, anyway, let's uh, create another node here. And it's going to be a property of normal. And let's drag this out. Now, the beautiful thing about dragging from an already defined property or another node is that you only get the nodes that Unity thinks make sense right here. So what we want is the input of texture. Um, there's something wrong with the view of the normal map that color seems off, but doesn't matter, hopefully. So let's turn this into normal and this is what we want. Awesome. And that's it. So let's drag this to our tangent space and save the asset. Cool. But there is something off. And the reason for this is that this texture is actually made for Unreal. So the green channel is flipped. Let's fix that. But instead of using Photoshop, let's do it inside of the shader graph. So we'll put down a multiply node and we will simply multiply the green channel with minus one and put down a combine node awesome so we take this red 
we take the green from here and we take the blue from here and I guess the alpha as well oh that's there we go the alpha doesn't actually matter but anyway we could actually just pull the RGB3 out like this instead and let's save the asset oh that's a mission let's see how we can get out of this mess we just click this and delete and there we go to normal and now save the asset and voila all of those beautiful details are sticking out like they should cool so nothing new really so far but like one of the most annoying things about using the normal unity to me before learning shader coding and such was always that when you created a new shader and you had to make do with the old standard one. Let's just create a material instead. The metallic and the occlusion, etc., were set as separate masks, which meant you had to use quite a lot of textures. But like most of you, I really wanted to have a packed set of the three main textures that I needed, which were uh, roughness or smoothness, as is the case of Unity, occlusion, and metallic. So let's create another node, which is going to be a type of texture to the asset and convert this to a property. And I'm going to call this guy AO underline roughness underline metallic. Okay, great. And let's insert our R texture right here. Okay, great. And we'll create another node, which will be of type property and AOR. I'm guessing they're gonna include drag and drop later on as well. And for this, we will be using the artistic normal? No. We will be using the, the sampler first, of course, yeah. And something to be aware of when you're using masks like this is that they should generally be put to non-sRGB. So this should be in linear space, which is uh, very nice. Smoothness is what Unity uses. So again, since Unreal uses roughness, we'll just invert this channel here as well. And we will drag the ambient occlusion to occlusion, the roughness or smoothness to smoothness, and the metalness to metallic. And let's save the asset. Ooh, very nice. I guess it reverts to black rather than white if it's empty. So let's get to the skin and drag and drop our skin texture. Wow, that is weird. And the gear texture right there. That does look a lot better. Okay, so the reason for this is that my skin texture is actually set up for a subsurface scattering system. And I suppose that we can't actually do that here as of yet. So we will actually skip that and for now I will put down a vector one as they're called and I'm just gonna set that to to one or actually to zero and put this into our metalness so things don't look so weird. Okay cool and as you may have seen or may not have seen here you can change to the specular workflow if you'd like to do that. You have the opaque and transparent here and the most common blend types right down here. And of course, two-sided. So with all that, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've hopefully learned something as well. Please let me know what you thought down in the comment section. And if you want to, check out Echo Tales on Facebook. The link is in the description. And also our studio's next big project, Beneath the Waves. The link will be in the description for this as well. They're both made in Unreal, 
but hey, you can't always be faithful to your favorite engine, right? Okay, thank you. Bye.